How do I show you that we have all been indoctrinated from birth to consider non-humans as merely a product for our pleasure, for corporate profit? That you have been trained by the system to separate the products you purchase from the desperate cry of a suffering animal? How do I even make you care if you don't already? What more evidence can I give you when even the innocent baby, the intended recipient for his mother's milk, is on the actual logo. When on the logo you see the innocent faces of the now dead skin in front of you and you cannot connect their screams. When those very same sentient beings were slaughtered simply to be turned into fluffy toy versions of themselves that you give to your child to cuddle into at night. When your eyes have been so trained to be mesmerized by pretty marketing that you cannot connect the image in front of you as somebody who was once struggling desperately to live. How do I open you to that truth without you being offended? That you have been complicit, as I have been, in the legal torture of billions of innocent non-human beings. And that behind every shopping choice we all make as the brainwashed consumer is a terrified victim.
What's a, what's a load of crap? Animal, 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 vegan. Yes, they're animals, not humans. Animals, get animal, 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 Yeah. Hi, my name is Brent. I am a drive a 35 ton excavator in the construction industry and I'm a vegan animal rights activist. Um, I was born in Sydney and uh, moved to West Australia to the farming community, Katanning, um, when I was seven and uh, grew up on a farm um, and uh, a few farms over the years. And um, one of the farms we settled on, I uh, mean, my father, sole stepfather, built a uh, piggery. So we had extra income and more money for the family. So, what does it take to start a piggery? Need a boar and a sow, pens, a couple of huts, and um, that's it basically. Uh, you start outside, and um, many piggeries that are outside in the dirt, uh, or we can upscale and go to an intensive piggery, which me and my stepfather end up building a shed for which had gestation crates in it and then pens um, so they can take all different size pigs as we grow them. What's a gestation crate? Uh, it's a crate made out of uh, steel piping which the um, sow lives in. Uh, it's only sort of a couple of inches wider than itself and um, the same lengthways, not much room to move around, just enough to drop down and um, sort of lay on the side so the piglets can suckle on it. How long will it stay in that gestation crate? Uh, it's the same gestation crate for the whole gestation period. Um, more intensive piggeries would have them there for life. I'll go out to the boar, pregnated gestation crate, have a piglets and it's just a routine thing. It just stays in the crate pretty much? Yeah, basically, yeah. There's, there's nowhere else to put it. Oh, terribly, yeah. Yeah, well, they live on um, a grate their whole life. Um, so when they sh they step it through and it pushes through to underneath where it gets pumped out and does whatever with. So these grating, it's wire and um, just think of yourself abrasions. Um, just constant movement, the same position, getting up. It's always on their hocks or their feet, um, um, sides or their back, depending on how big they are. Some, some sows are sort of too big for the crates and when they lay down they're rubbing on the side steel as well. So they get sores everywhere and we sort of just cover them up with a purple spray to stop infection happening and leave them at that. Okay, so why cover up the infection? Um, so they don't get sick, they can produce more piglets and we can, yeah, get more money. So tell me, what happens to the piglets? Um, the piglets are born and they grow up and we um, sell them on depending on where in the market we want to sell them or um, usually meat trays on a pub for a Sunday Sunday session. But um, for the piglets to get there, we need to do a couple of things to keep them safer or keep, yeah, keep them safe from each other. Um, and that's by cutting their tails off because they'll probably either get them chewed off which can cause infection. Um, and um, cutting their teeth down so they haven't got sharp little teeth and bite each other all the time. Tell me about that process. It's just a matter of sort of holding in there like in the fetal position so the tail's accessible and then head's accessible. And stepfather used to come yeah. in with um, the side wire cutters and just clip the teeth down um, and cut the tails off at the same time all in one go. And you can see that they were in a lot of pain because the blood obviously um, and on the teeth you can see you've cut down further to the nerve because it's bleeding as well. The squeals that they go through and they're trying to kick and get away from it as well. It's just sort of cutting their tails off like would be cutting your little finger off. They're like babies, aren't they? They are babies. I mean they've they got a family, they've got a mother, they had a father. So I mean they're just because they can't speak it doesn't mean then they can't feel, they can't have emotions. So. So they're quite scared when this happens? Oh, of course. I mean, they've been ripped away from their mother to start with when they're, that's her, that's their safety. Um, and then you got this person holding them the way they do, constricting them, they got nowhere to move, and then chopping their tail and teeth off. I mean, 
thing of if, if you were the victim, how would you feel? Could you can describe for me um, your story of veganism? What happened? And, um, uh, how you get there? Yeah, it was forward 218, so what, two and a half years ago now, I was um, in a place of PTSD and depression that I've suffered from the military time. Um, and a friend came along and sort of um, showed me a couple of books. I read a couple of books to sort of get myself better and then um, into Hinduism as well, showed me part of Hinduism and um, Ahimsa, non-violence and um, yeah, compassion for every living thing. And at the time I thought, wouldn't that be nice not to be able to kill stuff to eat and I mean, to survive. I mean, to me, that's what it was all about. I didn't really know about veganism. Um, and then, yeah, sort of 18 months later, I, I watched a video which led me to another one, documentary which led me to another one, What the Hell, Earthlings and Cowspiracy. Um, and I broke down crying. I, what I saw on the screens um, resonated with me that much and my heart just felt that sad that I could see myself in the videos. And even though it wasn't me doing those terrible things there, I did do some bad things to animals um, that I shouldn't have, I suppose, uh, now that I know what I know. Um, and, it, and it hit me in a spot where I just had no other option in my mind that I, needed, I knew what I needed to do, and that was to speak up for them. Seen footage like this before? Yeah, where's that? Uh, On Facebook or somewhere like that? Yeah, what do you Netflix think? Netflix also, I think. Oh, on a documentary? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think of it? Not so easy to think about. No, no. Are you against animal cruelty? Yeah, you believe this sort of is along the lines of what you believe animal cruelty is meant to be? I'm not sure I uh, follow what you mean. Like, do you believe this is animal cruelty, what you say? Yeah. yeah. Do you consume meat and dairy? Yeah. Do you realise you're... Yeah. yeah. But how does that make you feel, knowing that you made that link now? No, no, uh, link. No, please. The link? All right, then do you, do you know that you contribute to this indirectly? Yeah. When you consume meat and dairy? Yeah. That's all we're just trying to show people now that there's different alternatives out there 
and we're killing 60 billion animals a year, putting them through this sort of suffering and torture just so we can eat them for the sake of taste. And with so many alternatives out there now, um, like all the activists here are vegan, we don't consume any animal products whatsoever, um, we can survive healthy and we can survive a lot easier and not contribute to the suffering of the animals anymore. Uh, hard today. I think my biggest point, the one point would be for non-vegans just to listen to us instead of fight us for what we're trying to do and bring compassion to this world and love to this world and stop this merciless killing of these animals, just to listen to us and ask us why we do this instead of having a go at us because of some silly belief that they've got. I mean, and once once a non-vegan under can understand where a vegan's coming from, there is room to change then. But until that happens, um, and until they don't see us as the enemy, uh, it's going to be a long struggle. It's going to be a hard struggle for us, but we can change the world one person at a time. It's better off for the animals in the end. G'day mate, how are we? You had a good weekend? No? Yeah. I'm just kind of thinking it's the weekend <laughs> on holiday. Oh, well done. I wish I was too. Uh, what do you think of the footage you see here? Have you seen it before? No, it doesn't surprise me at all though. No? You understand what it is then? Well, I... Not totally. I don't think you're selling it that well, but it's about cruelty to animals. Yeah. The, the masses, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, basically all this footage is from Australian farms, um, factory farming, um, and organic farming, any farming that we've got here. And all we are trying to do, we're not trying to sell anything, we're just trying to bring to light the public the truth of what goes on in our farms, the suffering that the animals go through so we can eat them, as you said. Um, the people are having a hard time making the connection between what they, what, eat, what they what eat, reality. Yeah, exactly. But then again, and what then two and, and a half, three months ago, the whole country got an uproar over live export trade. When this is worse off, there's, if anything, it, there's no difference, and it's worse. We've got footage of pigs drowning their own shit underneath the, underneath the grating, and that's no different from the live export trade. But people, because this is normalised, it's a commodity. They don't want to know. Look what Hitler did. People. Will Ignore anything. Yeah, but people can but people can change as well. I mean, we're all vegan here, and we're changing lives every day. We do this. People are walking up, and getting information, but then coming back weeks later and thanking us. So, but do you eat do you eat a lot of meat or dairy? Yeah. So you understand you can indirectly contribute to it. Absolutely. How's it make you feel though? Well, I mean, you know. I don't want to like seeing that. No, and no one does. As Paul McCartney said, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, would all be vegan. Anyone who wears clothing is contributing to it. Indirectly, but the, the definition of vegan is to um, the reduce the pain, the suffering, the death as much as practical as and possible as well. So we don't, I don't go out and um, go and buy that pack of chips knowing it's got milk in it. So I don't go to the restaurant, I ask for vegan food if I eat something that's got butter in it, it's, it's not my fault, I ask for vegan meals, so we do what we can. I know I drive a car, I know I catch a tram, I know from the moment we're born we're killing animals. Um, so, but... As you said, you do what you can. Yeah. But could you do what you can as well, knowing what's going on? knowing that you're contributing to this. I mean, it goes through the meat industry, well, the yeah, egg industry. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to think about what it is that I can do and what I'm prepared to do. Well, you don't need to think about what you can do. What you can do is stop consuming animals. It's as simple as that, really. I yeah, mean, it's, it's a, no, it's that's a moral... not going to happen to me. No, I know. It's a moral choice. And, moral, and morally, yeah. it comes down to right or wrong. So not is it, happen with Why is that? Because I don't want to stop. But I, I mean, I'm an ex-farmer. I didn't want to I didn't want to stop eating my pigs that I bred. That's um, all right, but, mate. No, that's all right. Um, but why don't you want to stop? What is it? 
with meat, dairy, eggs and honey and that sort of stuff that makes you not want to stop. Just the taste? No, I think it's I actually think it's unhealthy to be vegan to be honest. Oh okay, why is that? Because most vegans I know, mind you most people who eat meat and fat and all that don't look healthy either. Oh exactly. I mean we we do have unhealthy vegans. We have junk food vegans, we have raw whole food, whole plant food based vegans, so But I think that they're two different things. You're talking about the treatment of animals. Yeah. And you're telling me not to eat an animal because I'm feeding into the treatment of animals. But I think it's different to... Charlie Solomon, are you there? Animals eat other animals. Yeah, but that's a natural you know? instinct to it. A lion will go out and find its prey because it's yeah, a natural yeah, no, carnivore. But we're not, a na- we're not natural carnivores. We are omnivores where we have eaten meat in the past because of location and seasonals. But we're factory farming. Filming, we're, factory fa- filmed, we're factory farming 60 billion animals a year just so we can eat them by se- for selfish taste. So, I just want to learn from you, that's all. The more I learn from why people don't want to change their diet, why they want to still consume animals, especially when they know what goes on, um, and you've admitted to that this is a terrible practice, but still you buying it through supply and demand, you buying it from the supermarket, it's going to have the farmer producing it, selling it to the slaughterhouse. To anyone on the street, you know, you go shopping in there, you go shopping anywhere, and you're contributing to that. So where are you going to draw the line? I'm not but I'm not consciously con- contributing to anything. I'm not consciously going out and buying an animal product. I'm not consciously going to the supermarket and buying a steak or to Myers or H&M and buying a woolen sweater. I go do my research and everything I've got on is yeah. cruelty free. And everything I eat is cruelty free. But you still haven't answered my, the question, what is it that I stops like you? You like meat, is it, but is it a taste? It is the taste. So selfishly, you want to eat meat when there's other alternatives out there, contribute to the suffering of these animals. Then. You want to judge it as selfish? I'm not judging it, but it. it is. But it's a selfish you choice. Selfish. It, is, it is a selfish so choice. A it's a selfish choice. A it comes down to a moral choice, and if you choose the wrong choice, it's a selfish choice. Especially, we speak up for the animals that don't have a voice. They feel pain. They have emotions. You're, you're just making a judgment and you said you're not being judgmental. You are. Oh, is that, you want to keep going on with that? Yeah, well, all right. Well, I'm judgmental then. It's a selfish choice and I say it to everyone I talk to. But if you want to get back up on your haunches because I called you selfish, you are. Well, you keep bringing it up. But you, you don't want to know it as a selfish choice, though. Do you agree no. it's a selfish choice? It's a choice. When you're killing an animal that doesn't want to be killed, just so you can have a taste for two minutes, you don't call that selfish. Do you use public transport? Yes, I do. That, What's that got that to do with veganism? Electricity or petrol, or and and they take that out of the. And you're missing the point of being vegan, mate. Have a great weekend. Thanks for coming. Every second comment on Facebook in an, um in a thread is your hippie, tree hugger, dull bludger, go get a job. Um, and these are derogatory terms that these non-vegans want to use because they've got nothing else to come back with. They're, they're to a point where, um, like I've had friends come in and they argue against a meme. And they're, like we've been going out straight for six hours or something, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And every time I come back with compassion and this, that and other, and they keep deflecting, keep deflecting, they all try and put it back on a vegan. But then in the end, they get that frustrated. Then they start the name calling and, oh yeah, you're bludgeoning. I suppose you haven't got a job. How can a vegan activist be on Facebook? Or, and that sort of stuff. So they've got to get personal in the end because they have not got a morally right answer to come back with when we present our the evidence to them. If you really care about the environment, stop eating meat, um, stop 
eating fish, I mean, stop eating eggs, it's, it's all connected. I mean, the trillions of animals we breed each year into this world um, is slowly killing the environment around us, which is going to kill us. But the funny thing is the earth will survive and it will continue, but it's going to kill us out because we're not treating it right. When you go to a shop and you see the meat section and you see families just chopping there blindly, or they're just chopping there and they're just popping it into their um, you know, basket without even thinking about it, what are your thoughts? I feel sad for them. I feel sad that they don't know. Um, I feel sad that even if they have been bought and shown veganism that they don't get it, they don't understand it. Um, I feel sad that they haven't made the connection between their pet cat and a pig in a, in a farm. Um, it really is sadness because um, at the end of the day, I know why they're like that because they've been they haven't been told the truth over the years and they've been conditioned, as I said, for the agenda the government wants. It's, um, it's all to do with money at the end of the day and to control the masses, they control the money. Why do you believe animals deserve rights? Um, because they, I mean, they're a sentient, a sentient being. Um, they have emotions, they have feelings, they have a brain to think. Um, they just don't have a voice to say, no, please don't kill me, please don't hurt me, please don't do this, please don't do that. I can't, I don't see a difference between a cat, a mouse, a pig and a cow. To me, they're all animals, um, not one's a farming one that we can eat and one's not. They're just, they're all animals that are here for a purpose, but not the purpose that we believe that they're here for. So what keeps you in the game of being an activist? What is the drives you, what really drives you deeper? Um, it's where my heart's led me. Um, I can't describe it any other way. I just, I got this big pull to do what I do. Be, you know, I, because I love the animals, I don't want to see them to suffer anymore. Um, especially when we've got so many options out there now for vegan eating. I mean, we don't need these meat proteins, these egg proteins to survive, we just don't. Um, and my heart just, it's my heart at the end of the day. Um, and I won't stop, I'll do what I do and I won't stop speaking up for them as long as I can. My name's Louise and I'm a real estate agent and I'm also an animal rights activist because restraining from animal products and being vegan is not enough. These sentient, compassionate beings also need a voice. Hi there, uh, my name's Tom and I currently live in Bangkok and I'm a vegan activist quite honestly because there really is no reason anymore in our world to harm other animals, ourselves, each other and there are so many alternatives out there that will help sustain our planet, frankly. Hi, I'm Ethan and I'm a school student and a vegan activist for animals because I love animals. I'm Ebony and I'm an animal rights activist because I don't believe in animal cruelty and I'm really sick of seeing um, people saying that they're against animal cruelty and they love animals but they still contribute to this. Seems like a bit of an abusive relationship to me so I'm just, I've had enough and I'm out here fighting for them. Hi, I am Elisa. I live in Bangkok for 25 years. Uh, I work as a journalist here currently and uh, I also have a YouTube channel that I'm starting right now and I'm an animal rights activist. Uh, my name is Kalayani. Um, I live in Bangkok and uh, I, I am, <laughs> I own this, this is my, my pet, okay? And, uh, I am an animal activist because uh, I just want to uh, make justice for the weaker and to protect the weaker, that's all. Hello, I'm Bridie, I'm from Australia but I live in Bangkok. I'm a teacher and I'm a vegan animal rights activist because 
I see the injustice that is happening to animals every day and that nearly everyone is contributing to it and uh, with my skills and with my resources I'm able to do something about it and um, I choose to do that by volunteering at the Cube and working with other activists to try to share this message of love and compassion throughout the world. I am a vegan animal rights activist and there is no easier decision that I have ever made.